The Nintendo Switch Lite has officially been announced. What exactly is it? How is it different from a normal Switch? We've got all your answers right here with 10 things you gotta know. Let's get started off with the first point at number 10. The biggest thing, the light is confirmed to not have any docking or TV output whatsoever. This makes the Switch Lite a dedicated 100% handheld device. This is the thing we've already seen people arguing about the most. I mean, if you think about it, it's a Nintendo Switch that doesn't switch to anything. It's missing the charm, it's missing that core design philosophy, what the Switch set out to do. But it's made for people, or maybe even young kids, who just play exclusively in handheld mode. I much prefer paying a little more and having more options, but that's just me. There's gonna be a lot of Nintendo fans that just don't embrace this, but it might find a new group of fans. Who knows, it could do really well. We're just speculating. Uh, other people are comparing it to a 3DS, which Price-wise, we'll talk in another point, but I think the focus here is really the games you're playing on it. And also, think of the 2DS. It wasn't really for the hardcore crowd, we all laughed at it, but it worked for kids, and it sells. But anyway, let's move on to number 9. Another thing that makes this thing stand out from the standard Nintendo Switch is the lack of HD rumble and the IR sensor thing. This is another thing that Nintendo tried to make an original selling point of the Switch before launch and it didn't really take off the way they were totally expecting. Cause sure, it's got some cool implementation in some games, but it's not exactly standard other than just the vibration. Still, you do lose out on some functionality in games that do rely on those functions, especially vibration. And those vibration motors are really, really good, but alas. This is interesting though, but it makes sense and probably helps out with increasing the battery life. Because at number eight, speaking of that battery life, the Switch Lite apparently will have a longer one, seeing as how it's optimized for portability only. According to Nintendo, the Switch Lite will have a battery range of like three to seven hours, depending on what type of game you're playing. Because of course you could be playing little 2D games or massive 3D open world games. That's gonna affect the battery. Now this three to seven hours is a slight jump from the original Switch, which Nintendo has listed at two and a half hours to eight and a half hours. So uh, roughly the light will be a half hour stronger. Nintendo references Breath of the Wild as one of the more battery intensive games. Uh, your play will jump from three hours to almost four hours. This feels to me like they could be stretching it a little bit with the numbers, but we'll have to wait and see when we can really get our hands on the thing to see if it really makes a difference. Moving on to number seven, the Nintendo Switch Lite will not have detachable Joy-Cons. This is big, which it makes sense for a handheld only version of the Switch seeing as that you won't be docking it. But what's weird is that not having detachable Joy-Cons actually affects how certain games will play. The biggest one we can think of is uh, Pokemon Let's Go, which is a game that you have to play with motion controllers. You need to be able to detach a Joy-Con to catch Pokemon, uh, which you can't really do on the Nintendo Switch Lite. The same thing goes for Super Mario Odyssey, which you can technically play handheld fine and get through the whole game, but I'd argue that playing the game with motion controls is a bit more fun and the way to play it. Uh, something else like Snipper Clips is another example. Uh, that game is built around co-op with each player using a single Joy-Con, but if you can't detach them, how can you really do any of that? Well, there technically is a way to play these games because you can, it is confirmed, sync Joy-Cons to the Switch Lite and play that way, but seeing that you can't dock it and play it on TV and the fact that it, it doesn't have a kickstand just makes that more annoying, I think. But at least you have the option, I guess. Anyway, next at number six with more facts, this thing is gonna come standard in a choice of three different colors. We got yellow, a sort of teal, and a light gray. Or as I call them, PP colored, Gumby colored, and a better than regular Switch gray. These come in 32 gigs like the regular Nintendo Switch, and thankfully, just like it, the memory can be expanded with micro SD cards. Also, there's going to be a Pokemon Sword and Shield edition that has a super sexy color scheme. Now look at this thing. As of the time of making this video, it looks like it's only Europe, but it could likely come to North America. You know, we're putting this out the day of the announcement. This one is super nice looking though. Maybe it'll come with more Pokemon. <laughs> Shots fired, sorry. Over at number five, this one is another smaller detail that you may have missed, but it's definitely worth talking about that we mentioned briefly. The thing doesn't have a dang kickstand. The official Nintendo.com fact sheet for comparisons of the 2017 model and the Switch Lite reads as follows, and I quote, does not support output to a TV, therefore it does not come with a dock, HDMI cable, or kickstand. Why you would include the kickstand but in the part relating to the docking it to a TV is beyond me, but still, uh, the point stands. Nintendo opted out of a kickstand when building this newer, cheaper model, which 
Like, I don't really want to speculate on design decisions most of the time, but for real, how much extra could having a kickstand included really cost? So yeah, if you get a Switch Lite, we regret to inform you that you can't be that guy from the initial Switch reveal trailer who's playing on a tray table, which I guess makes it a little sense if you don't have detachable Joy-Cons either. But come on, I, that being said, fully I expect there to be third-party cases definitely that have a kickstand integrated into them. You know, like the ones you see people buying for their big phones so they can sit and watch Neon Genesis Evangelion on their phone while they just eat alone at Arby's and hope nobody makes eye contact with them. Next up at number four, the OG Nintendo Switch weighs in at approximately 0.88 pounds with Joy-Cons attached, whereas the new Switch Lite clocks in at approximately 0.61 pounds, making it a much lighter option, a full roughly 30% lighter to be specific. If you want an easy comparison, you can make right now if you were so inclined. You can just pop the Joy-Cons off of your regular one and just hold the standalone unit with the screen. That part alone weighs approximately 0.66 pounds so it's about 22 grams heavier than the Switch Lite in its entirety, now you know. Yeah, it's not an exact analog for the weight of the new Switch, but you can get a general idea that it's in the same ballpark, and it's wild to think that something that small and light can play the majority of the Switch library. Like, that's crazy, like Mortal Kombat? I don't know, we're into it. Little bits of difference in weight make a difference. We're looking at you, cell phones that upgrade every single year. But anyway, at number three, I think one of the most exciting revelations of the Switch Lite is on the left Joy-Con side. Look at that D-pad, man! Since the Joy-Cons don't detach, the left and right sides don't have any obligation to also double as small mini controllers to be passed around, and therefore they don't need dedicated buttons on the side and can have a proper D-pad. This is very cool, considering a lot of folks have wanted this option. Uh, you know, Hori, the accessory manufacturer, actually makes a left Joy-Con that has a D-pad, and people who like a bit more precision with certain games have embraced it. Call me silly, call me petty, but I think this thing having a dedicated D-pad is awesome. The Joy-Con thing is fun, it's great, but sometimes it feels like this thing is coming home. Does that make sense? Also, Nintendo Switch has just come out and said that they have no plans to actually make a left Joy-Con with a D-pad. And uh, yeah, okay, thanks a lot, guys. Anyway, at number two, with the Switch Lite being the cheaper alternative, it's just smaller all around, has a smaller screen as well. While the original, now standard Switch console has a 6.2 inch capacitive touchscreen with a resolution of 1280 by 720, the new Switch Lite is still rocking capacitive touchscreen, but the screen size has been reduced by 0.7 inches, leaving you with a 5.5 inch screen. That said, the 5.5 inch screen has the same 720p resolution as the larger 6.2 inch screen, so we should be seeing a slight bump in pixel density that should, in theory, give us a slightly crisper image on the handheld, which, I mean, I will not complain about. I know a lot of people tend to freak out when there's a change like shrinking down the screen, but it's nice to see it's more or less the same type of situation and screen setup as the last model, just albeit slightly smaller. Plus a 5.5 inch screen, you can compare that with smartphones to get a feel for it, so you know what you're getting. But finally at number one, the new Nintendo Switch Lite will be launching at $200, which is $100 cheaper than the current OG model Switch. Now I see a lot of people online thinking that the $200 price point is a little too high, but also fun fact, you know, Nintendo stuff is always expensive. The OG 3DS launched at 250 and then dropped to 170 after six months of kind of languishing. And the new 3DS XL launched at actually just $200. Also at $200 is actually the cheapest console, even though it's not a console anymore at all, but that you, know, that you can get at retail pricing. Yeah, sales happen, but I I'm talking about straight up retail pricing. The next cheapest console would actually be that all digital no disc drive Xbox One S that goes for 250 retail. The Switch also does have some big AAA titles that are also on other consoles that we talked about like earlier. It's got like Wolfenstein, Doom, Mortal Kombat, Skyrim, and it's even gonna have The, the Witcher 3 soon. There are some obvious visual downgrades, but we played Doom on Switch and it is totally playable. So if you think about it, I'd say that the Switch Lite price is actually fairly competitive considering what it plays. And I wonder if that $50 price difference is enough to make some people go with a Switch Lite over just like a regular alternative console. Who knows though, this is just speculation, just food for thought. These are the things you need to know about the Nintendo Switch Lite. There are still some unanswered questions out there, but we're very excited to see what the deal is with this thing. It launches September 20th, 2019, and we can't wait to get our hands on it and see exactly what's going on. 
But of course, we wanna know from you guys what you think about this thing. This has gotten the internet pretty heated, so we expect the comment section to be that way. So be careful, be safe, let's talk. If you enjoyed this video and learned something, maybe we helped you out. Clicking the like button is the best way you can help us out. We would really appreciate that. And also, if you're new, it's worth considering subscribing and hitting that notification bell because we put out new videos every single day. But hey, as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.